Greetings to you all and welcome back to Let's Play The Land Riser with me, Artego Omega. Uh, we need to get setting up our attacking forces. We'll go for pikes again for Erwin, still the only one who can get them. And as we said before, those werewolves, they're a bit like horsemen. They're treated as the same type of unit. So we're going to need a couple of pikes. Let's take a look and see what we've got looking about the place. Couple of warhammers. There's the dragon scale. What's that do? Four defense. Necklace. Okay, that's a very nice item. That gives that increases the diamond of influence, two squares, and it gives all of our troops plus three defense. So that's gonna be very nice. And I'm gonna let Erwin have it. Just to make him even stronger than he already is. So there we're done. Hain will put you in the, the sort of back row, but on the other side. I don't want to keep putting Airwin and Hain together, because they seem to be the two best units. So we'll split them up a bit. I don't know if the elves are going to be much use, but it's better than nothing. Stick me a wand. And you have to stick with the cloak. It's all rather boring for you, Hain, but there we go. Rogar. Still stuck on barbarians. Now I want to keep the warhammers for the flyers, I think. So we'll keep you on a dagger. And. It's just a cloak and a buckler. As we imagine defense. We can have a buckler, we'll give the cloak to someone else. And we'll put you centre forward. I bought five barriers instead of four. Oh that's fine, it only cost ten P. Stick with the flyers, I like the mobility. Maybe I should give Lester, the new boy, a Warhammer, because I really want him to get some levels. Yeah, okay. Sure, can have one, and then Keith can have a dagger. Yeah, th yeah, this will do fine. If we let Sheree have the better weapon, then we'll let Keith have the better armour. That's all nice and fair, then. And I just completely went against what I said, didn't I? Let me, let me redo that quick. Dead. Track and skip. Right. I wonder how many people noticed that last scenario I completely forgot to equip everyone with all of their stuff. Well, we got through it okay, so apparently it didn't matter. I haven't bought you any troops yet, have I, Lester? Mermen. Yeah, they're okay. In water, they're obviously very nice. On land, they're useless. So, we're going to have fun in this land level. Oh, now, once again, grab your monks. Have you learnt to hold anything yet? No, it's still all beyond you. Stick with the cross. And you can back up. There we go. Okay, that looks good to me. Let us sort there. Notice the deployment of units is starting to take significantly longer. Okay, so clearly these guys are evil. They get sort of blood dripping text, I suppose. Alright, fair enough.
Yeah, I was going to say, that's quite handy if there are guardians. In all fairness, if we believe that we can take the guardians, then clearly uh, they can't hold up Egbert either. And so they're entirely redundant. I don't run down Hain. It's my job. Okay, we're just going to get ourselves close this turn. You'll notice the uh, the diamond of influence for Erwin now is as large as its movement. Maybe a bit of a waste to put it on the pikemen because they don't have the mobility. Maybe if I put it on one of the flyers, then you know we'll be able to attack from all sorts of angles and still be in the influence. So maybe that was a bad move on my part. Maybe I'll mix it up for the next scenario. Erwin's just got so much defence already, I figure just throw all the defence in and then we can't lose. I do prioritise Erwin for defensive purposes, because remember, if Erwin dies, we fail the mission. If anyone else dies, that's absolutely fine. I hope Merman can keep up. Well, they can, they can move really far. That's surprising. How can Merman can move so far on land? One thing I have noticed that I've forgotten to do, I'll do it quickly. You need to be on manual, good sir. Typical first turn, everyone just move up, get into position, get ready. What can you do? You have to do it. No, we may as well split evenly. Shuri, go left. Send Keith to the right. Now another spell that Liana has that I haven't mentioned or spoken about yet. If you remember she has a turn undead spell as well as a heal. That does what you think it does. It will completely destroy any undead unit. I believe it can miss, but if it hits, it kills them. So we're going to be using that, and it still grants our experience for killing enemies that way. So there's no reason whatsoever not to use it. And all those things put together, this is why this scenario is one of the best for getting Liana some much needed levels. I'd be very surprised if she doesn't level up by the end of this scenario. Saying that means she's not going to. She's probably going to die in the first couple of turns. But that'll be good fun. We can have a nice laugh at that. That's so pointless. Yes, that's it. You tell him. Okay, you're going to move one square towards the shrine. Not quite living up to your powerful words there, are you, lady? Now, are they going to hold steady or are they going to rush out and meet me? No, they're going to do this slight unit rearrangement and stay where they are. What do you think there? The computer's showing off. Ghosts can go through walls, which means they can also sit inside walls. Which I do believe give you an incredibly large defence bonus. It's a shame we can't take advantage of that, but... Well, we're human. Benefits to being human outweigh the, the negatives. Well, even the blobs are just sitting where they are. I suppose they are the guardian ancient spirit defenders, whatever. So they wouldn't attack, would they? Are we going to see action this turn? Maybe, but it, if we do, it's not going to be anything impressive. We get a chance to show off the slimes here. With their 22 defence. That's my 22 attack. 
Yeah, so we're going to have a lot of fights to end by that. These, these guys are just a pain to get past. I believe they're weak to magic, which means the left hand side are going to do okay. But this right hand side is going to have some problems. I we'll have to get Airwind to use his magic. I think it's a bad decision on the game's part to start you quite so far away. One turn of moving forward we can all grin and bear, but two turns of moving forward without really doing anything, it's not great, is it? It can't be that fun for you guys to watch, so I apologise for that. But it's the game's fault, not mine. Well, that's odd. It seems we can just sort of jump up the stairs, or the the overhang, whatever this thing is, rather than going up the stairs themselves. Not sure why. Hmm. Don't attack this turn. We want hay in there. We want to use his magic. Now archers. They are not very effective, as we saw against things like pikemen, things with high defense. That means against the gels, they're completely redundant. They are not going to do a thing. It'll be very handy against the horsemen coming up, but for now we just want to protect them. Maybe I should cut out all of these moving forwards that we sometimes get at the beginning of scenarios. Maybe I should fast forward it, I'm not sure. Let me see if I fast forward it, then none of my commentary is going to come out audibly. But you guys let me know what you think. If you don't mind just watching me move the units up, let's have a general chat about what's coming up in the level and things, and then we'll keep it how it is. I don't think there's that many levels where we start miles away from the action. Anyway, next turn we'll be, we'll be getting some fighting underway. Admittedly it's going to be against slimes, so it's not going to be the most enthralling battle you've ever seen, but it's a fight nonetheless. Yes, quick pose for the camera. doesn't help matters that we do have to watch five commander type monsters and all of their units decide to take no action. Oh, this slime actually fancies his chances. It's probably right. That's a manly cry of pain for the red blob. Listen out for that next time, whether he attacks or we attack him. That was, that was quite a noise. Oh, the little guys are the same. Unfortunately, the merman dying and the clashing of weapons sounds went over the top, so we didn't get to hear it in all of its true glory. I do find it humorous that the gels have to have a death screen. They've got no mouths, they've got no means of producing noise, but still, they wanted to put a, uh, a bit of noise in. And then again, when we attack them, the, the chings of metal come off, so... You know, we can't complain about these things, I guess. 